P.E. with Dave and Jay. I'm his guy, Jay. That's my bestie, Dave. What up, son? What's good? What's good, man? <laughs> hey, man. Hell so, yeah, look, man. man. You know, one thing One thing I think we've neglected so far, man, we put out some great content. But I don't think people know what we're about, man. I don't think they know what we're trying to do here, man. And uh, Let them know, Honestly, son. I'm going to take, take this time out real quick, man. So, honestly, man, when, 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 when I look at my, my, my folks, the people that look like me, right, uh, one thing I see that we are lacking in this community. And I think uh, this platform, man, I'm hoping to try to create that, man. Like, you know, just like any other culture, man, the Jews, the Asians, whoever, has, you know what I mean? They have they have a great sense of community. And I'm trying to create that, uh, you know, uh, through this platform, honestly, man. And, and so my PE today is basically providing enlightenment, right? Because, okay, so to, so really what's going on with us, man, is we, you know, we're still going through trauma, right? So what, tra- what does trauma need? It needs therapy, right? And what does the therapist really do? They don't necessarily fix your issues they just kind of like put you on to your issues and then they allow you to kind of work it out on your own so you know this this here this platform is is, is basically or at least today would like to like you know put some things out there to kind of show us you know what kind of things have been inflicting us for so long and uh, what we can do to actually you know kind of rectify it. not necessarily what we can do to rectify it but more so like you know what you're going to do with it rather all right now now that i put it on your plate what you're going to do with it type deal so um one of Go into a little bit of things that uh, you know that plague us from way back, from from the times of slavery that we still do today. That we really don't have you know the real science behind. You know, some people, or at least some people, don't have you know the science behind it. We just that's what we that's what we really do to provide enlightenment to kind of you know shed some light on the situation. I'm glad, I'm glad you it, brought man. that up, man. I'm glad you brought that up, bro, because um, this what what PE what PE is for me, man, is um, it's a, a natural thing, right? It's something that we started doing um, before we even were doing it, right? And when you mentioned therapy, we started bouncing ideas off each other and realizing that we were, uh, it was therapeutic. Our conversations were therapeutic because uh, we were able to sharpen each other, right? That's what, uh, that's what good friends do. That's what brothers do. We were sharpening each other, but also there's a, a mutual respect and love there where we can be um, vulnerable with each other. So it became very therapeutic, right? Um, so I, I appreciate you sharing that with our um, workout buddies at home. Um, definitely gonna get into some, some heavy shit today. Um, definitely going to get a great uh, core workout today, um, but we still going to have some fun because, hey, you know, life is meant to be enjoyed, right? So, but, you know, one thing, one, one other thing that I want to say, I'm um, glad that you started it on that no day. One thing that I want to say that I haven't said, I don't think I've said it on this podcast yet. I love you, bro. Mm. I love you. Yeah. You're one of my favorite yeah, too, people bro. in the world, bro. You're one of my favorite hey, people man, in the world. Life. You know? yeah, you know? that's, that's something that we say to each other when we're in conversation all the time, but we don't say it. Uh, we know I don't think we said it recorded yet. But yo, listen, right. you, one of the reasons why I love you, man, is because you sharpen me, right? You sharpen me. Like right. I said, you put me on to Joy the Groove, right? You put me ah. on to Joy the Groove. People at home, check the link right here. Joy the Groove. Mm. She's a doctor, mm. Dr. Joy the Groove. Yo, she yeah. is amazing, right? Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, so, and it's what you're talking about, the trauma. So in a nutshell, uh, Joy DeGruy, Dr. Joy DeGruy, she put a terminology, a term on something that just about almost every Black person I speak to, we already know things. We know that there are remnants of uh, slavery, right? We know that there are things that plague us and we don't really know how to explain it. We never had a term until Dr. DeGruy gave us this term. It's called PTSS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, po- uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome, right? Wow. Amazing, amazing, wow. right? And we, you know, wow. it, we, we just call it slavery. Like, they're like, why, why is this? Why, you know, people might, outside our community might say, why is your community this way? And all we could really wow. say up to this point is slavery, you know? But yeah. now what mm-hmm. Dr. DeGruy has given us is she's given us a baseline for discussion. And like you said, yeah. it's trauma. And with trauma, yeah. you need therapy, right? Um, Absolutely. We haven't so atoned yet. We haven't yeah, had we haven't yet. Yeah, so we, we before need we get that. into it, before we get into it, right? And we're gonna talk about the things that Dr. DeGru said. We're gonna talk about some of the things that we see that are remnants um, of slavery. Um, but before we do that, let's get to this uh, this exercise. So what's our first what's oh, our first search? For sure, for sure, right? You gotta break these muscles down here. All right. So we're gonna do some human pullovers. You probably saw this in the uh, Sean Harris. 
Uh, Have you shout out, out to Sean? Home, shout, shout out to Sean. A, a little man. more than a week ago. Yeah, my man. And then so basically, man, you know, we're going to be bracing ourselves on some type of apparatus that's very sturdy, all right? Because you're going to be pulling your lower torso up, okay? So you yeah. want to maintain arm distance here. And you want to come up with the legs and down slope. And you don't want to hit the ground, all right? Try to keep right. your legs off of the ground. What are we calling this again? Right, so human pullovers. Human pullovers. Human pullovers. Human pullover. So, yeah, and then the thing is, you want to do max rep, right? Uh, I know you're not a big fan of uh, max rep, but, um, you know, with ab workouts, I tend to not really put numbers on it, man. I like to just go hard and, and just uh, knock them out as many as you can. Um, back to our grade school days when you just did as many as you could, you know what I mean? So, like, that's pretty much the premise of our workout here with, uh, with abs, except for uh, the ladder workouts on the ground. <clears throat> Where you know I'm not gonna be sitting there doing menacing ball twist to like exhaust myself, right? I'm gonna actually right, right, right. mind. All right, all right, so yeah, that's our, that's pretty much our first workout. All right, so what all you right. got for us, man? What you got for us? All right, cool. So um, like I said, enjoy the groove. She basically is saying, it's your set or it's my set. It's gonna be. It's Go gonna ahead, be you my take set. your first set. All right, cool. So Doctor the Groove, Doctor the Groove says uh, that PTSS, we are um, we are is suffering from post-traumatic slave syndrome. And she's saying that there are certain remnants that we can see in the way that we behave. Um, so this syndrome is our behavioral responses to um, traumatic and multi-generational oppression. So all my folks out there who don't want to, who want to oppose, yeah, who want to oppose the idea of slavery still, uh, uh, you know, slavery still uh, manifesting itself today, um, just keep in mind that slavery was multi-generational. So it wasn't like the Holocaust. Uh, it wasn't like um, um, uh, Japanese wow. in, 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 in camps, you know, Very Japanese um, internment camps. It wasn't like that. Yep. It wasn't like indentured servitude. Of um, It wasn't like um, the Hebrews and the e e Egyptians, all right? But oh, American man. slavery was something that you, is something that you, the world has never seen before. And it is an American tragedy and trauma. Now, right? You feel? Hey, well, let's go, let's go down. Let, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just emphasize this. Imagine being born. So my man said a handful, all right? If you didn't catch that, man, I don't know where you at. But imagine being born into that, okay, with no choice. That is your life. And you know what's crazy about that is that you know most people being born into that didn't really know the difference, all right? They didn't know that they were actually being oppressed. That's the crazy part for me. So uh, my bad, bro. I had to. No, no. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm still in my set. Keep going. <laughs> okay. So another thing that I wanted to talk about, man, if you gonna allow me the platform. Yeah. So, uh, so when we talk about, we're gonna talk today a little bit about devaluing. Okay. And that's just something that uh, that we're good at. Okay. We're definitely good at that. And why? So take 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 for instance the game we used to play, childhood game called the Dust. Wait. Right? Wait. Wait. Before right. you drop it on them, one other right. thing, one other thing. Dr. DeGru, she is a um, psychologist, I believe, right? When you undergo, say PTSD, right? Veterans come back, veterans come back, they have PTSD. They might go to a school or they, well, not a school, they might go to a library and go postal. And people will say, damn, yeah, PTSD. We should have put him in what? Therapy. We should have got him help. He should have had him on, he should have been on meds and he should have had help and we need to take care of our veterans. And I completely we agree. Should have, we should have identified it. We should have seen it. We should have identified it, right? Yeah, yeah. But here we yeah. are, here we are after 400 and some odd years of, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 400 and some odd years of uh, slavery, you know, we're ah. expected to get over such trauma, such multi-generational trauma. We're supposed ah. to get over it without any therapy or any help. Right? So Dr. DeGru is saying we need therapy in order to be the best people that we can be because we are born into a generational trauma. Those things were passed and you know, down. And one of the things you're about to talk about is the things that were passed down, right, Dave? Yeah, and then sometimes it's just being aware, man. Sometimes you, you do better when you know better, right? So look, man, put right. this into perspective, right? You know, there's a childhood game we used to, go, we, you know, we used to play called The Dozens, right? Where we used to oh, just yeah. get there and join on each other. You know what I mean? In the lunchroom, wherever have you, street corner, whatever have you, just kind of just bomb on each other, right? Talk about our 
Right. Families talk about what you got on, how you look. You so black, you so this. Okay. <laughs> now, not knowing, I mean, just being ignorant to it, you know, that's passed down trauma as well. Just not, not knowing where it came from, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know where it comes from. Okay. That, that, <laughs> that activity basically came from being on an auction, on the auction blocks, right? And basically, and that is the tactic used to devalue the slaves to be sold by the Dutch. <laughs> So they're sitting there critiquing and, and, and devaluating these folks on sale, like people on sale. And, and, and these merchants are basically trying to, so they're, they're using this rhetoric to devalue these people <laughs> to be able to get a deal on them. <laughs> and here it is, we're doing it to ourselves, okay? Why is it that we start off with, you're so black? Like, black is that the worst thing Ooh. you could possibly be. You know what I mean? Like, that's the craziest part about it, man. So, like, you know, shout out to Joy DeBlue for that, you know, insight. But, you know, that's... uh. That's insane that we still carry that on to this day and don't know why, right? That's the thing. Like I said, it, hopefully that now that we know, we won't do anymore. We won't, you know, we won't continue with that uh, with that bad habit, man. Seriously. All right, sorry, man. Yo, I, yeah. I love I love this topic so much, Dave, because when you when you first when you first brought it up, I was like, okay, yeah, he's talking about the dozen. But oh, you know, I love to research, right? So. That, believe it or not, you will believe it. Okay, so the dozens, where does this term come from, right? It comes from an old English verb called two dozen, right? Two dozen, right? Which means to, um, to stupefy or like to best, basically. Like to, um, it ah. means to, yeah, to get the best of someone and make them look stupid. Like yeah. to, like you, you engage in some kind of, um, uh, battle Bumble, with them, Bumble, and you, yeah, yeah, Bumble. and you, oh, you stupefy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, yeah, ex exchange, right? And you you yeah, you yeah. stupefy them, you daze them. To do doesn't means to daze, right? Um, ah. and and so I was looking into this. Um, there was a there's a woman. Her name is Mona Lisa something. I can't remember. Um, she's a uh, she was a black uh, historian, and she said she agreed with you that um the dozens comes from the auction block. She said it came from deformed, there would be deformed, um, you know, human beings who were being uh, yep. slave traffic, black, right? or, 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 or worn out. Yep. Or worn yep. out. Yep. And what they would do was they would, they would group them, get this day, they would group them in cheap dozens. They were considered yep. cheap dozens, right? So that they could be sold cheaper, just like you said, right? But... Yep. What bothers me about this, uh, what bothers me about us saying that slavery is the root of um, somebody getting in behind me on the road. Just get it, bro. Get it, bro. Sorry if you can hear that, right? <laughs> but what bothers me about, <laughs> I might have to wait until you finish it. <laughs> can you hear that? It's loud as shit. What bothers me about us attributing the dozens to slavery is this, there's a dude named um, Amuzi Kamezi, right? Amuzi Kamezi. And he, he researched and found that in Nigeria, prior to slavery, in Nigeria, there's something called the um, Ikocho Nkocho, or Ikacho Nkacho, which means um, basically it was an exchange from children. Just like you said, it was a children's game where they would insult each other. They wouldn't talk about each other's parents though, or each other's mama, because that was oh, the thing. But in Nigeria, in Nigeria uh -oh. and Ghana, yeah, in Nigeria and Ghana, that was a game that they played even before slavery, right? Then there's a dude, oh. there's a dude, his name is uh he has a good name. His name is Dave. His name is Dave, Davy, Davy B Cook, right? He's a, a hip hop historian. He attributes the dozens to Africa, just like um Amezi uh, Amuzi uh, Amuzi Kamezi did, right? But he's saying that black people don't want to just be physically better than each other, you know, and in competition, but we want to be witty too. And he says that the dozens comes from Nigeria and Africa and it shows itself playing out in battle rap, right? That's where the battle wow. rap comes from, from us trying to be wittier and trying to say quick things and freestyle. So Dave Cook says, yo, I love this part. He says that when it, when it, as it relates to slavery, the dozens, he says that they weren't talking about each other. He says they would oh. huddle around each other. They would huddle in a circle, like a freestyle, and they would say, yo mama, yo mama this and yo mama that. But you know who they was talking about? They was talking yeah. about your master, your master. Yeah. 
He, was, he says that over. they were substituting the mama for the master. I'll give you something on top of that, though, right? So, you know, later on, I think we'll get into colorism, right? But, you know, right. there was a distinction between, um, you know, the, the, the field slave and the house slave, right? So uh, this, this, is, this is the killer part. So from what I understand, from what I understand from my research, is that, yeah, they might have been talking about, you know, a uh, uh, master, but they were also talking about those in favor of master. Right, like you're right. Yeah. working in the house. So because because physical violence was outlawed, because it, it, it was like a property crime, right? If, if, if so, because they were property, uh, the only the only means of really combating each other was verbally, you know, and it would cut on those folks in the house, basically. And uh, you know, and I think that's where our colorism, you know, issues come from as well, right? So these guys that are highly favored that look in a that look a certain way were getting you know, get all the props and get kudos. Special treatment. Hell yeah. Uh, they would use that. But see, this is the thing. So it, that's awesome, man. It's an awesome piece of information that we you know, that, that that came from a you know that came from a, a longer lineage, right? That came from you know us actually sharpening our tools and sharpening our minds. So I right. guess the point that I'm trying to make is okay. With that being said, that it got turned into something ugly. You know what I'm saying? From yeah. from from that uh, uh, you know from that exchange. So. I mean, let's keep that going. I mean, because I love hip hop, I love freestyle, yeah. and I love, I love, I love that verbal intercourse. But uh, yeah, I mean, but as far as devaluing, that's what we need yeah, to start. Yeah, devaluing, you know? right? Yeah, and that, I, I agree with you on that. That's what we absorb from 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 that culture, and that's what needs to stop, man. But good piece of information, man. That's all. Awesome. I got one more. I got yeah. one more for you. I got one more for you. No, oh, hold on. Before uh, you do that, before you do that, let's move to the next. All right, cool. What we got? All right, we're gonna do some hanging knee raise. And so I'm gonna add a new one. So, so here it is. I'm gonna knee raise, right? But I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna stick it out. I'm bring it back in. That look like what Annalise. Uh, you know that look like the uh, thing Ava came up with. No, I sent you that video. My little six year old coming up with uh, exercise videos. You charge me. So you're coming up. Here, here. Bring it out. Boom. All right. I always. Oh, one question. Um, you know, since we did this in our, in our uh, core, in our abs, abs, abs video, if you haven't seen it, do better. Go check it out. Get some of these. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> nah, but since you showed me this exercise in um, the abs, abs, abs video, you know, I've been incorporating this into my uh, regimen, right? But one question I do have is this. Am I hanging completely or am I here? Am I nah, hanging nah, hang, or am hang, I here? Hang no, nah, hang completely. I mean, you don't want to really unnecessarily oh, no. engage your your uh your, your, arms. your arms yeah just, just uh, hang. so we just gonna hang all right cool just hang. cool all right yes sir um all right for um for our beginners this is gonna be a hard one for beginners man try to do five of them for intermediate uh folks go ahead and try to hit the 10 to 15 and if we're advanced folks just do um until exhausted and you know what the the leg extension is probably the harder you know the harder uh uh you know uh i guess Movement, you know what I mean, for folks. So, yeah. if so you can just raise it up, bring it back down. Just raise it up as much as you can, or um, you know, what do what you can do, um, do what you can do. Um, oh, last bit of information about um the dozens, right? So this makes me angry. 1939, I think it is. Um, the first Afri Afri first academic study, of course, um, first academic study of the dozens was done by a dude named John Pollard. No, Dollar, oh. like dollars. Well, with a D on the end, Dollard. I think that's the name, John Dollard, um, a white uh, psychologist. Um, and he came up with this frustration hyphen aggression theory. It should be a link right here. Um, where basically he says that the dozens is, a, it, it, it comes out of slavery because black people were angry and it gave us a sense of, um, it, it helps us voice our frustration and, ah, outlet, and you know, an outlet. And, and, and outlet, right? What I don't like about it is one, don't talk about our struggle. You help create it. That's for one. But for two, um, you know, don't, or you could talk about a struggle, but don't try to talk about it like the most intelligent person in the room, right, man? Um, but two, um, what I don't like know. about it is, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what I don't like about it is it's called the frustration aggression theory. And what he's leading to show is that 
aggression happens because of frustration. So what he had said by focusing on us, what he is essentially doing is saying, this is why black people are so aggressive. This is why they're so angry and violent. You know, they're frustrated, then they get aggressive, then they get violent. Ooh, you know what I mean? Rather than saying, let's, let's start from the beginning of why they're frustrated in the first place. You feel me? That's what the study yeah. should be on. What, what was, the study should be, what is wrong with this people that they would feel it necessary and okay to subjugate another people? That's what we really should yeah. be focused on. Where did it come from, right? Let's go right. to the source. Let's go to the source. All right, so look, man, like now that we're talking about devaluing, right, I want to move on to another piece of, uh, uh, another behavioral tactic that you, know, you see. And it's kind of, this one is, I guess, you know, somewhat subdued, right? It's not something that's really out there. Now, not a lot of folks are aware of. And this will probably rock you, right? So, like, and this is another one of those tidbits from uh, Joy DeGroote, man, that, that just kind of blew my mind when I heard it because, man, I, I you know, I do it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I do it, okay? As conscious as I think I am, I do this, right? So she was, uh, she, she talked of a situation where, you know, I guess her, you know, she was talking to a, a white female and they were, you know, comparing notes on their children. And they were, she's basically saying, you know, the white woman was complimenting her saying, oh, you know, your son is, uh, he's, pretty, he's doing pretty well. I mean, wow, he's doing so well. I, like, he's, he's very smart. He's doing this, he's doing that, okay? And then the first response from the black mother would be, Oh, yeah, he get on my nerves. Oh, my God, you should see his room. Oh, like, man, uh, yeah, I hear you, but, you know, butt this, butt that. And, and basically just putting Buddy down and not necessarily just accepting the comment for what it's worth, right? Just uh, accepting okay. the fact that her son is actually, you it's know, yeah. worth something, right? And, you know, what, what blew my mind, I was like, yeah, you know, I, re- I, you know what, I do that myself. You know, it's like, man, your daughter's very beautiful. Your daughter's really doing well. I was like, yeah, man, but you should see her room. Oh, my gosh. You can't keep this. So, so at, you know, as I'm listening to this, I'm trying to, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of relating it to my behavior and where that came from, okay? And this is what your mind is. Back in, the, back in those days, we didn't want to, you know, like how it was just like a basically a crime to read. So uh-huh. if you had a kid of any value, okay, if you had or, 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 or any family member of any value, you would try to devalue them so they wouldn't sell them. So they wouldn't sell them off because family was very important to those folks. No, so they would use this tactic of devaluing their family members to be able to keep them subdued, to keep them, you know, under wraps, to keep them, you know, uh, to keep them with them. So it was one of those things where, like, that's just trauma passed down through the blood to us, and we don't uh, know why we do that. Like, we really don't know why. We don't, I don't, we don't know why we do that. Like, why can't we just take a compliment for what it's worth? Why do we have right. to add that negative aspect to it? You know what I mean? And it yeah. comes from that. They were afraid. They were afraid that they were going to sell because once they, once the, once these folks found out the, the, the worth of this child, they would sell them off. Right. You know? And uh, right. So, so it was a defense mechanism. It was a defense it, mechanism. Exactly it was. Exactly it was them, them. It was protecting their children so that they could keep their families together any way that they could. Um, but at the same time, what happens when that child hears you saying that about them? What happens? Right. Because you know, because even you know, way back then, still now, but. Way back then, children were to be heard and used, but not, you know, I mean, they, they would be seen and used, but not heard, right? So you couldn't talk, you, you couldn't voice your opinion to your, to your, uh, you know, to your parent or your adult, um, because that you, you probably get back in it. That's what we're about to talk about next. Um, but yeah, you, so the whole devaluing of a child in front of a child, because you're trying to protect them, and they don't even know that that's what you're doing. They just think you really think that they're dumb. With them with it, or ain't shit, you know. That's powerful, man. I find myself doing that. I find my, I find myself doing that too. I was, um, but even deeper, I find myself doing that with myself. Right? Uh, I consider it me being, me being humble. You know, somebody says, uh, "Oh, you know," somebody might be like, "Oh, man, you look, you, you can't, you can't put on some muscle, man." I'm like, uh-huh, you, you, yeah. you know, or hey, man, that was a nah. If they say it was a great episode, I'm always like, "Yeah, we did shit." Right. Well, what you got? What you got in your hair? What you got? Well, what you got in your hair? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's oh, it's nothing. It's just juices and berries. I've like, been growing it since birth. Yeah, yeah. yeah these like man, you never know, know. perm, right? Yeah, that you never know, know. perm. Hate is hate is by nature, right? Hate is by nature, man. Um, and yeah. and again, man, that's something. That's I, I mean, look, I didn't really convey that well, right? But I mean, you get the gist, right? 
that's just oh, something yeah. you know inherently that we do, and, and and we don't really know why. And it was because of that. And so, like, man, they did a they did a laboratory study on a on a on a, a rat. Basically, they exposed the rat to a certain type of stimulus, right? And every right. time the rat did something, it would get shot. Okay, so then that rat reproduced and had children. Oh, I'm sorry, children had offspring. Okay, so <laughs> what they found is that that same the same the offspring from that rat actually. Uh, respond to the same type of stimulus without even being subjected to the experiment. Right. So those type of things are actually passed down through the blood. Like, so me, I'm a very frugal individual, homie. Like, I really don't like spending money. Uh, not one of my favorite pastimes. Um, and that, and then, you know, my dad was in my life, like, you know, in the house till about, you know, till I was seven years old. So I didn't really understand, you know, uh, you know, financial literacy at all. But it was just something that I guess was just passed down from him to me. Um, right. You know, without really seeing, you know, how he operates and how he deals with money. And it's the same thing with my daughter. My daughter's super frugal, right? Watching her operate is insane. Like, I'm like, oh, my, she's like, screws me duck, you know? And yes. so it's just like, man, you know, I, I, and I didn't necessarily, you know, teach her teach that. Teach her that. Like, I didn't, yeah. tell her, I didn't tell her, yo, yo, you know, uh, you know, you need to save up all your dough. Don't spend it on frivolous things. I kind of just, you know, I just was who I was. You know what I mean? And, uh Again, that's not something that necessary that that you know that I taught us. So I think that is true that these things are just passed down through the blood. Passed down. Without it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily. I, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And what I love about what Dr. DeGroo does or has done is she's given evidence. She's given scientific evidence. Evidence that has used the scientific method of proof, right? So oh, so yeah. no longer, yeah. no longer gone are the days where people outside of our culture and outside of our history can tell us, no, that is inaccurate. They can't do that no more because that rat study, that study is in Joy DeGruy's work. Like she's the one who put us on to that. You know what I mean? So if you could, if you could take rats and study, I don't know, um, birth control or any other medicine on it, you know, or study any other kind of uh, theory on rats to prove some kind of European theory, there's no way that you can say that you can't prove this uh, PTSS on rats as well. You feel me? Yeah, yep. I like that. Well, we, um, it, it's one other thing, but I think it's time for us to move to another exercise, right? For sure, man. So we're gonna stay what up we on this, uh, we're gonna stay in the, in the hanging mode here, man, and we're just gonna do hanging knee raises up and over. All right? All right. Pretty, uh, good. kind of difficult workout, but we're gonna start from one side, bring it over, and then come back. Yeah. Bring it over. You know what, man, I apologize. We get so caught up in the content. Nah, we're we doing work. Nah, we're doing great. You know, honestly, I'm. I, I've been. You know, this has been the premise. Like I said, this is the premise of this platform. This is the whole point why we started this. And I'm just so excited Dave, to be here. So, so for for our beginners, right? Instead of doing the um knee raise over, this right here was pretty difficult already. Can they just stick with the let them stick with the knee raises right here instead of bringing them over? Well, I mean, they can take a break <laughs> if, if need be. Uh, while we get it in. Um, hey, I'm with y'all beginners. It ain't in. a break. As long as you're working, it ain't no break. So raise your knees. Well, you ain't got to bring them over if you can. You could try one or try two, but if you can't, don't feel bad. Just bring, bring your knees up. Don't do the straight forward there because that adds a little extra. Just bring your knees straight up. God, I got you just, back. Uh, they can, yeah, they can sit there and partake in, the, in you know, the knowledge you're trying to drop, man. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. You took a break, man, because we all put some, some crazy workouts here, man. But uh, right, honestly, cool. um, I wouldn't try to modify this too much because the whole point is to hit the obliques, right? That's the whole point of this. So um, I have another exercise that they could do, in, you know, uh, in, at the, in the other room uh, that they could actually substitute that for. But again, for the time being, man, uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much as far as modification on this one. All right, All right man, cool. go ahead, go ahead. I'm um, last, one, last one. So would you, So obviously we've talked about this before, right? Um, what about spanking your kids? You think that's oh, a, a, a pass down? You think that's a pass down? Uh, that's passed down from slavery. Of, of course it is. All right, so it's your set, right? It's your set. Of yeah. course, of course it is. Okay. Um, honestly, man, the way I see it, um, as far as uh, spanking children, man, it, uh, like why? Okay. Honestly, when you look at it, man, we are we have lived life, okay, and that's why you know we're adults, okay, and we have lived life, and we should at this point be smarter than our children. You understand what I'm saying? And we shouldn't be putting our hands on our children because, you know, it's our job to kind of build them up. Uh, and, and, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, so honestly, like, you know, I talk to a lot of my friends about 
disrespecting your kids, and, and they say, well, what if your kid is in the store and they, you know, they're catching a tantrum and blah blah blah, and you, you know, you just can't control them. I said, man, you, you know, the best thing to do is take them away from that situation, um, and, and, and don't and, and deprive them of that audience that they seek. You know what I mean? Um, and and what they'll do is they'll also, uh, you know, kind of quote the Bible on them, say, you know, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child, right? Which I think is a, a load of shit. Okay, because I've never seen a shepherd. Uh, you know, Ooh, out this is the one that got me. Say it again. I'm sorry. I've, I've never, I've never the seen Holy a shepherd beat, right. I've never seen a shepherd beat the shit out of sheep. Okay, so I think they've uh, they've taken that out of context. Okay, the rod and the staff is there to die. Okay, when a sheep kind of gets out of you know uh, gets out of formation, that rod is there to kind of uh, uh, to allow the shepherd to not get into its fight or, or, or flight mode. Okay, or or flight zone rather. Okay, so in order to center itself, you know, to where, you know, you're, you're out of the, the view of the sheep, because sheep are skittish, right? To be out of the way of the sheep, so, you know, that rod kind of just dives them back to the flock without you having to be in their space, you know? Because once you're too close and once you're, you know, kind of invading their space, they tend to, they tend to flee, okay? So that rod is there to die. And I think what the, the verse meant, honestly, in my interpretation is necessarily sparing the rod is actually neglecting your children, as far as attention, okay? And then you spoil the child. You see, so Jay and I had the privilege to go to boarding school, okay? And uh, we saw a lot of that there because they would send those kids to school to get them out of their hair, okay? To get them out of their hair. So those kids were spoiled, okay? Because they did what they want because they didn't have real guidance because their parents weren't in their life because they were too rich or affluent or whatever have you to really have time for children. Okay, that's just my point of view. I might, you know, people may disagree, but that's what I saw. That was my perspective. Sue me, right? So pretty much, man, you know, uh, I don't agree with beating the children because of where it came from. You know, what right, so, you know. So, so you're set, you're set, you're set. All right. All right. So I don't beat my kids either, bro. I have daughters. Even if I had, when I have a son, I tell my, I literally say to my daughters this, literally, because I used to thank them. I literally say to them this. Do you want, are you a slave? That's what I say. Mm. Are you a slave? Mm. Do I need to spank you and hit you in order for you to behave? That's what I say to my daughter. My daughter is five, six, the 14 year old. But my five and six year old, I say, are you a slave? No. Do you need to be beaten and spanked in order to, be, to behave? No. Well, I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to give you instructions and you're gonna do what I tell you to do. Is that clear? That's clear, right? Oh. Now, when it comes to, um, and that, that was, a, you know, I already was not feeling right about spanking my kids by the time you and I uh, regained contact and had this conversation. But when it comes to the slavery, um, Joy, Dr. DeGruy put us on game. They, um, enslaved Africans would beat their kids so the master wouldn't beat them. When the kids oh. stepped out of place, when the kids stepped out of place or was someplace they had no business being or spoke out of turn, they would quickly, because they wanted to correct the child themselves, because if the master corrected them, oh, it would it be over. striped on their back. It would be yeah. um, clipping their tongue. It would be putting the, the bit on their mouth or putting the thing around their neck. Um, you know what I'm saying? It, it would be clubbing right. their foot. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I like to throw out those images to make sure people know that slavery was a real fucking thing. You know, it's not just something that we can get over. They did this to children, you know? so. Beating your kids, I can see how slavery, you know, was can be blamed that. on that. Yeah, influence that. Yeah, influence that. Influence yeah, that. yeah, yeah, bro. And, and you know, just like you said, man. And and the phrase that she said, the phrase that she used was, "I was trying to beat the rebellion out of them." Yes. Right. Yes. right? That was I'm so pull hard. A move. This is your move right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was so hard, right? Like I, you know. Uh, opposed to allowing them to because they don't they don't care and love for you like I do, right? So again, that passed down trauma, man. And again, we're, we're, we're adults, man. We're supposed to be smarter than children. What are we doing striking children, right? You remember that feeling, man, when like moms or pops beat, beat you down or they did something or they said something kind of hurtful to you and then they came back and was like, well, you know, this hurts me more than you and then they, they embrace right. you. You remember that feeling yeah. of confusion, that love yeah. and you just kind of broke down crying without them touching you? I mean, that's trauma, okay? Yeah. I don't care what people say. That's trauma. I've seen it with my children, and I'm just sitting there like, yep. man, I know that feeling all too well, man. I, why am I passing this down? What the hell is wrong? Right. We're supposed to be smarter. That's why we're the, we're the adults. 
black we're supposed to outwit our children, okay? Black. We have to stop that shit, okay? Yeah, man. Um, and the thing is, man, violence begets violence. I'm sorry. It just does. It does. Okay? Research shows it. Uh, Research shows it. Okay, like, so, it re- research so, shows. Like, just Google it. Just ask. You don't even have to type it in your phone. Just talk to your Google device. Say, hey, Siri, just ask them. Just say, tell me about spanking children. It's going to tell you the truth. Research shows that it makes kids more violent. It makes them more aggressive and does not cure the behavior that you're trying to solve. It makes them um, depressed. It makes them have anxiety. It makes them afraid of you. Um, it makes them afraid. have um, social. Yeah. Say it again. Afraid. 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 You want your kids to fear you or respect you, bro? Ma'am. Work out, buddy. Which, which is it? Up. If you have melanin in your skin, yeah. stop eating your kids, man. And, and regardless of what you think or what you, how you were raised and how you turned out, when it comes down to it, we don't need to beat our kids. It's not working. The prisons are yeah. still filled with people that look like me. You do not need to beat your sons. It's not working. <laughs> and then, you you know, and the, and the retort would be, well, that's that white shit. Okay. That's that that's white that's shit. shit. That's that bullshit. That's what that is. That's and it might look, and it might be and it might be that look, but it started with some white shit. Think about it like that. It started with that white uh, shit. There you go. There you go. Stop being your kid, so, yeah, man. I, if you could take anything from this lesson, you know, it's that. Honestly, like I, I learned the hallway, you know, I learned the hallway with my children, their experiments, man. Honestly, when you have them at a young age. Um, and uh, I've noticed a difference in, 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 in the way that I can the way that I can, uh, I guess, influence my children, you know what I mean? And what, you know, the, the, the stimulus that they were, the stimuli that they respond to, man. Um, and again, man, when, you, when you're using that thinker, man, you're promoting that, man. You're promoting that with them as well, you know? Now, okay. they might get a little slick with you, but, you know, that's, that's promoting growth, you know, up here as well. You know what I mean? So no, I, did, I, did, I, I did what you, uh, I, asked, I asked your advice, and um, I told you I was going to do something. You were like, no, nah, I don't do that. I told you, I was like, yo, I'm going to, because... I'll say this first. It literally used to break me down when I was spanking my kids, all right? Uh, it would break me down. Like, I would damn near cry. And y'all can say, what, think whatever y'all want about me. I don't like, I didn't like the feeling of beating my kids or I was spanking my kids. So, that's natural. Yeah, so I, I, for one, I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. Yeah, I stopped doing it for me first, right? Because I was like, I don't like this shit. I feel like a bad parent. But then I told Dave, I was like, yo, I'm going to tell my kids. I'm not going to spank them anymore. And they were like, don't do it. He's like, Dave is like, yo, that's like telling your, uh, telling the opposite team that you got the big joker. No, he's yeah. like, yeah. you're showing all your cards. Yeah. Don't do it, you know? Yeah. But I did, man. I did. And um, I did it because I saw trauma in my kids. I saw like my youngest, because um, she's the one that would try me the most. I saw that, you know, when I would raise my voice to her, I would say, stop. You know, she would just get so scared, like I was coming to get her. And I had to start ingraining in her mind, I am not your enemy, I am not your master. I am not your enemy, I am not your master. I am not the one that's gonna hurt you, I'm the one that's gonna help heal you. You understand? So I had to verbalize it. I needed them to hold me accountable too. So I needed them to be able to say, dad, you said, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's why I told them out loud. Um, but yeah, man, I'm to the point now where no. all I gotta do is talk to my kids and they cry. You know what I mean? Like they feel so bad I'm a, I'm a- me being disappointed. Just to keep the party going, I'm gonna show you this next exercise, and then I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna up. piggyback on that because I have to. Okay, I just have to. So we're doing um leg raises here. You guys remember these? You get on board the Roman chair. Yeah. Kind of bring her up. And like I said, you want to you know get those legs up to the point where you you're looking at your booty in the mirror, right? Yeah. All right. So that's the workout. That's the workout. Check it out. So when you know we're talking about providing you know providing enlightenment, right? So really how this all started for me as far as, um, you know, not beating my children is, you know, I was, I, I looked at it from this perspective, right? I have, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a father of three daughters, okay? And, you know, of course, the, being a patriarch, being the man of the family, I felt that being overly domineering in that sense and beating my, one, you know, my, my female children uh, was kind of negative because I didn't want them to, you know, respond to that stimulus and actually try to find a man. Because, you know, they, women always find a man like your daddy, right? If you're a good dad, nice. then most of the chances are they'll find a man like yourself. So I didn't want them to have to find a man that would have to do that to, so, you know, quote unquote, keep them in check. You understand what I'm saying? So think about it that in that, in that sense, um, the other way around as far as, uh, you know, our people, right? Um, nice. you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, like I said, you're trying to uh, promote growth. You're trying to promote mental growth with your children, and it's not gonna it's not gonna come from the physical. 
Same way, same way. So like that logic came, you know, started with, you know, with the female, from the female aspect, the male female dynamic. And then now it transcends into, you know, in, into our culture in that sense. So it just makes a lot of sense to me. It's a no brainer. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely no so yeah, you don't want them thinking that, uh, you don't want them thinking that that's what, like you said, you, you spank your kid and then tell them that it hurts you more than it hurts them. They cry, you send them to their room. And then when you're not angry no more, you tell them to come here and you hug them. They, they feel like reconnected with you and it becomes part of this cycle. It's like an addict. Um, I'm not sure if the workout buddies know that I am a recovering addict. It's like when you, when you use, there's a whole dynamic around using, even though it's based on trauma and you feel bad at the end of it, even the depression and the, the low part of the high, even though that feels shitty, it's still all part of this circle that is in addiction and you keep doing it and doing it. So your kids, when you beat them, they hate being beat, but they're gonna keep doing it because they know it's gonna lead to attention. It's gonna lead to that moment where you hug them and you say, it hurts me more than it hurts you. It's all part of this thing that is all uh, trauma. So I feel you on that. And thing. you know, and you know, for you folks that still beat your children, try something, try this experiment. Ask them, ask them what, what would they prefer? A beating or you taking away their phone? And, and yes, watch what they'll right. tell you. And right. watch what they tell you. And nine right. times out of 10, they're going to say, beat me and get it over. Beat me, beat me. Right? So Absolutely. what does that tell me? That is not effective. That shit don't work. Okay? There's no real consequence, right? Beating is short-lived. Okay, it is what it is. Now, it really is a short lived when you look at it. The activity itself is short lived, but the psychological effects kind of, you know, resonate. But you, you know, that alone right there, when I asked that question and they told me that, I was like, okay, no, you're not getting, you know what I mean? Like, again, man, experiment. We're smarter. We're supposed to be smarter than we're supposed to be, okay? Right. Uh, use, that, use, that, use that third eye. Use that third eye, seriously. One right. other thing about it for me, Dave, the one other thing about it for me is this. You're beating your kids because you're mad. You're beating your kids. You're spanking your kids. Well, they, we like to say spanking, right? Instead of beating. You're spanking your kids because you're frustrated. You're at your wit's end. You're beating them because you're at your wit's end, right? Um, be better. Be better. Be the adult. Or, or, or It's like, first of all, you don't want to hit your kid when you're angry because you're going to no. fly off and you're going to hurt them. They say that like 80 no. or 90% of the um, child, the child, uh, Protective mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. cases, yeah, the CP, the CPS service uh, cases, CPS cases, they come from parents who aren't necessarily abusive parents all the time, like burning their kids with cigarettes. Um, they're right. pretty much parents who got angry and they hurt, they hit, they hurt their kid, right? So don't hit well, your kid when you're angry. Yeah, don't hit your kid when you're angry, right? Um, and then the uh, shit, oh, hit your kid you're angry. Uh, forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> 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 no, but you know what, man? We can talk about this for days. Let me get the, let me get the next workout in. I'm gonna show you guys what's good, man. Why he gets to set in. All right, so this is gonna all be right. the oblique oblique twist on the Roman chair. All right, so we're here. Okay. And pretty much we're just like we're trying to isolate the obliques and and all the rest of the little ripply muscles that you get right here. All right, and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang like this, keep my arms straight, and then I'm gonna try to I'm gonna just okay. contract. Like I'm bringing my forehead to my toes. The toes. Screw. Screw. And you'll feel Scroop. that. Yeah, mm. I like that one. I, I like that Jeff Cavalier. Jeff Cavalier is one. You know, he put me onto this workout, man. Pretty much said this, nope. this is a workout that he wished that he knew way back when he first started working out, man. Because you know the the results Scroop that he's seen, he's been doing it for a short time. It, it, it's just it's, it's amazing. It's a serious and workout. When, so. And when you say obliques, Dave, you talking about those side, uh, those side. Uh, yeah, and then, and, then, right and, then, and then and then and then those those muscles that connect the obliques to everything else, man. Um, right. you know, uh, and it's an overlooked uh, overlooked muscle group there, man. A lot of people right. just want the six. But, point, but they make yeah, you look, they make you look good. They make you look good when you take your shirt off at the beach, straight up. Um, and also, um, it's a great stabilizer for your core. Great stabilizer right, ahead, for the core. I remember what I was gonna say. The other thing is this. When you're at QT or whatever gas station you have, or when you're at McDonald's, somebody cuts in front of you, you have words. You throw the dozens at each other, but you're not playing games. They make you real, real mad and real, real frustrated. Do you smack them? Do you punch them in the face? I mean, they didn't put their hands on you first. All they did was just talk. They didn't even bump you. Do you go haul off and hit them? 
nah, bro, because if you do, you lose your livelihood, you go to jail, you lose your family, possibly. You fuck your life up by putting your hands on people, on, on adults especially, right, that you don't know. But somehow we think because we're in the safety of our home. It's called assault. And we, it's called assault. It. It's assault. It's called assault. It's assault. <laughs> Stop assaulting no, your kids. Wrong, Black people, we want to do better financially. We want to do better emotionally. We want to do better, uh, uh, you know, in all aspects, right? We praise these people. Yeah, psychologically, we praise these people who have so much. and They're, you know, the king and queens of our world because they're celebrities with fame and fortune, you know, and we emu want to emulate them. I guarantee you, man, these folks are probably not beating their kids because if they get caught beating their kids, they're going to lose everything they got, all right? So if you want to you know be like B, B and J, you want to be like B and J, don't beat your kid. I'm going to change my PE to psychologically, you know, psychological enlightenment, right? <laughs> Boom, that's, that's yeah. the new, that's my PE from, you know, at this point, right? We talk about psychological warfare. Boom, psychological, psychological enlightenment, that's right? Here. That's what we do, yeah. right? You know, shedding light on that dark. Shedding yeah. light on that darkness that was plagued us for forever, you know. What did Sean say? 400, 400 years? <laughs> yeah, man. Years, man. Um, yeah, if you know better, do better. You know better, do better, man. <laughs> How you liking them oblique side bends, man? How you liking them? I need to focus, need to concentrate more on my right side because I feel it definitely on my left. I'm doing something wrong on my on my left side. I mean, on my right side. Let me see. Yeah, there well, it is. Just probably a little. I need to probably. I need to bend, oh, bend over a little bit more. I'm having to. I have to crunch a little bit. Well, there it is. Bring my head to my toes. That's what you said. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you feel it, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Don't forget to bend down. Uh, workout buddies at home. Don't forget to bend a little bit. Squeeze it. <clears throat> but I've been seeing a lot of stuff on social, on the social, saying this is when you you make your beach body, get your beach body in the winter, right? That's what everybody's been saying. I'm oh, sitting there chuckling up. Me and Dave is laughing because we like. Me and Dave like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess this is when you make your beach body, but you know we're like. Now nah, you make your beach body year round, bro. Year round. Hey, so, so another thing we haven't talked about, man. See, that's why I love episodes like this, man, because you're kind of just putting everything out in its perspective, man. But uh, a lot of people see you and say, hey, "Man, you're in great shape. What are you doing?" Okay, thirty percent effort, 70 percent nutrition, man. Can't emphasize that enough. I mean, we talk about we talk about what we you know what we put on our force. Uh, you know, and, and the thing is. You know, we talk about our vehicles, right? Look at it like this, man. You got a you got a high performance vehicle. You got like a Porsche or something. You got like a Lamborghini, whatever, whatever you're driving out there, right? Mercedes, right? The recommended octane, you know, for that vehicle is probably 93 at a minimum, yeah, 93. right? Um, 93, right? So what happens yeah. when you try to skip out? You're like, man, you know, only got so much to my name right now. Let me get five dollars at that 87. You put 87 in that vehicle. Watch how it runs, and uh, it's crazy because. <clears throat> You'll see that. Uh, <laughs> you'll see that. Oh man, my, my bad. I, I lost train of thought myself. Man, we got to edit that one. <laughs> nah, not at all. Uh, you got to you got to no. treat your body like you treat your vehicle, man. So, <laughs> well, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, But you like you know. All right. So what I was trying to say is that I noticed that once I got on that kick of you know eating healthy and eating right, the minute that I strayed off the beaten, you know, uh, off that off the beat path. Um, I felt the results immediately. And, I, and it was like, you know, it was resounding to me because I'm like, I felt like that all the time. I felt right. like that all the time. I was lethargic. I was crazy. And I just dealt with it and I lived with it. So now that I'm on this kick and I know better, man, it's, it's oh my God. It's like, it's, it's insane what we, what we deal with and what we put up with. You know Watch what I mean? This. Watch this. <laughs> Segway. Yo, so I'm not sure if you've ever drank uh, kombucha, kombucha. Have you ever drank that? Kombucha. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. All right. Yeah. I've been drinking kombucha. You know, I'm not drinking anything. Uh, uh, that's the sugariest thing. The, mo the thing with the most sugar that I drink, like, it's either water or, like, these zero sugar, like, uh, um, what's it called? The ice joint? Shout out yeah, to I, the ice company. It. Right, right, right. So um, I've been seeing it for something, you know, that has a different flavor to it. So I've been drinking some kombuchas. Come to find out it has all these nutritional benefits. It's super dope for you, right? So we're getting the car service yesterday. Had a wife and the two little ones with me. And I am ashamed to admit this, but whenever I eat healthy, especially in public, I feel like, hmm, I hope some white person is watching me. Because black oh. people don't black people don't eat like this. And I want to show them that I that black people can eat healthy. White people oh. aren't the only ones that know about kombucha. White people aren't the only ones that know how to eat healthy and, and eat fresh and 
eat farm raised. You know, a few weeks ago we were at a um a spot called um plant flower. It's called Flower Flower Child. Shout out to Flower Child. Y'all making great food. Um, I'm sitting there with my with my my um brunch crew with my what we call ourselves the the brunch uh, club the brunch club. I'm feeling so white, <laughs> feeling so white and right. I'm like, ooh, I'm eating healthy. That is a remnant of slavery. Uh, that is a remnant of slavery. Uh, the way uh, that we eat, the way that uh, we eat is a remnant of, the, the way that African-Americans tend to eat in this country is a remnant of slavery. The fact that we have to so, even force ourselves to eat lettuce, the romaine lettuce, or eat um, kale, or eat um, arugula, or eat spinach. The fact that when we make spinach, we doubt we throw butter and all this bad shit in it, or that we eat all of this you know, that we eat smothered pork chops or whatever it is, man. The fact that we eat the way yeah. that we do hog maw and, and pig's feet and, and chitlin. Shout out to uh, oh, my queen bee. Yeah, but hey, the fact that we hey, eat that hey. shit. It's ridiculous. And, <laughs> and it's because, you know, we're very resourceful people, huh? We're very right. resourceful people. What ends up That's happening what we is we to. got all the... We, we got all the scraps from the from the from the oh, you know the pig and from the from the animals, right? We got all the scraps and we made it good, right? What we call it? We call it soul food, soul right? Food. And we celebrate soul food, right? And soul we eat food. that on a regular basis, and it's just like, right. and that's like heart disease Killing is us. probably our number one killer, right? Diabetes, you know, our limbs chopped off. We're highly complex, you know, you know, pieces of machinery, man. And again, like I, you know, talked about, you know, putting high octane fuel in our bodies, man, to keep us good, man. Uh, we really don't, and we celebrate it, bro. We celebrate it, and uh, we're the most obese nation. And we right. and we and we lead the charge with that. Again, once you, when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. Um, and again, what that's they, another one of those generational curses. Generational another curse. One of what generational they used to do curse. when a um, when a when an enslaved African would run away if he was rebellious, well, you know, he would run away or if whatever they wanted to check one of them, they would <laughs> cut off a limb, right? Cut, cut off his limb, make sure he could still work. Cut off his cut off his, his his foot, right? Ironic that something the ways that we ate during slavery we're ah. still eating now, and what happens is they end up cutting off a limb, they end up diabetes. cutting off a foot of diabetes, right? It yeah. leaves you it leaves you unable to work, it leaves you unable to properly care for your family, it leaves you sitting Able. in a chair sitting in a chair three times a week for dialysis because you couldn't control what was on your fork and you couldn't get on a treadmill, right? So I understand it is trauma. But here is your therapy. You feel me? Message. <laughs> We're preaching today, Dave. We build, build it, bro. You build. Exactly, you man. So, you know, what you put on, you know, that's like, you know, I got three pillars of discipline, okay? And, yes, and, and one that starts off with what I put on my fork, okay? If you can maintain that, if you can control that, man, I mean, that that's, that's mastery to me. Also, lust and your emotions, man. My three pillars of discipline. If you can manage that, uh, you know, life is pretty simple after that. You know, it really is. Um, hey, I got and, one more uh, question for you, man. I'm not to cut you off. I got yeah, one yeah. more question for you. We got more. We got more in our circuit, right? Are we going back to the floor? Yeah, we're going back to the floor. We're All right, let me get to back to my other. Let me get back to my other spot. What's up, workout buddies? Y'all hanging with us? Y'all in there? I know you are. Hit like, no, like hit subscribe, man, these guys ain't, leave a comment. These guys ain't Let's serious go. about the workout today. We, I mean, <laughs> we we love you and we need you. We would be doing this without you, but hey. You're with us, so stay with us. You feel me? Yeah. Let's get it together. Let's build while we build. Hit like, hit subscribe, share this with somebody. You know what I mean? Let people know that we out here, man. We out here. So we're just going to need, uh, you know, That's hey, look, good. man, we're going into, uh, you know, like our, our cannonball, cherry bomb, you know, Ooh. oblique side bends, all that, you know, mason ball twist uh, sec se um, section. So, yeah, we're pretty much uh, winding it down. So, yeah, we're going to be on the ground Let's for go. the majority of this year. Majority, all right, cool. I got another question for you. So all, right. all this said and done, all this talk we doing, like sitting here talking like some house niggas, like some uppity, some uppity Negro. Uh, oh, New whoa. York City. What do you say in life? New York City. Whoa. New York. We talking whoa. like some New York cities, right? Yeah. So are we implying <laughs> that we're better than our ancestors, bro? Are we saying we talking about the way they ate and how we should eat now? We talking about the way that they raise their kids and how we should raise our kids now? We talking about um, the way that they play games with each other and you know insulted each other and we shouldn't we should play that game differently now? 
You know, are we, I always hear this, to, this topic or this conversation about like, uh-uh, if I was a, yo, yo, if I was a slave, I couldn't have been no slave because I was such a such. I would have Nat Turner them up, or I would have fucking been, I would have, people don't say this name, but I know, it. I would have been Gabriel Prosser on them motherfuckers, or I would have did this, or, you know, like, people always talk about what they would have did in slavery, and they wouldn't have been slaves, or they would have rebelled or revolted, but the, the thought remains, there were more of us than there were of them, and there were more of us that did not rebel, right, so right. are we saying that, are we saying that we're better, we're smarter, we're stronger, we're more, we're wiser than our ancestors were? What you think right, about that question? Before, before, before we, I answer yeah, this question, let me show you, yeah. show you what's up. All right, so it's going to be the Warrior Bow, okay? Shout out to uh, P90X for this one, man. Um, so pretty much, man, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you're, alter I mean, you're alternating this workout uh, from oh, yeah. left to right, but um, you're going to do opposing arm and leg. So if you push it, if you're extending your right, left arm, you're going to be pushing out your, your right leg, okay? And yeah. basically, when you come in, this is the contraction you want to pay attention to. Knee to elbow, and you want to hold it. It's kind of like a yoga yoga move, okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like that one. All right. And then alternate it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I lost my AirPod. Careful how you pick it up. I'm AirPod is sensitive. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much that. All right. You guys yep. seen this before? If you're following, if not, I'll show you again. Alternating your I mean, I'm sorry, opposing arm and leg. Extend it out. You should feel that in your lower right. back as well. Extend your arm out and then bring her in. And then Got hold it. it. All Got right. it. All right, I'll take the say. You remember my question, right? right. I do. All right, so All right. the whole point, are we better? You're damn right we're better, okay? The whole point of evolution is to be better and to, and to you know, and, and to progress, all right? And if we're not, man, and I think, honestly, we haven't, the, the real problem is we're not that much better, okay? <laughs> That's the problem, all right? And 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 it, it kind of goes into what we talked about a little earlier as far as us not having, not you know, necessarily atoning and and, and having that time of uh, reflection. You know, there's folks out there doing it, you know, Nation of Islam, uh, uh, you know, to say, to say the least, right? There's a lot of people that are kind of pushing that agenda as far as psychological warfare and telling us where we went wrong and trying to make us better. But as a whole, we're not doing that. You know, we're just kind of, you know, following suit. We're just falling into, you know, falling into the same rut. And, you know, what's, 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 what's crazy about that is that, you know, there's a lot of us that, you know, in that time frame, you said there was a lot of folks that didn't rebel. Yes, in that time frame, there's a lot of folks that were grateful for being there because of propaganda, because of Christianity, okay, to say the least. These people thought that, you know, uh, they were content being three-fifths of a man because they thought that, you know, white folks were doing them a favor. OK, so that's that's the other part. That's what's crazy about it. So um, and it's still and it's still folks with that mindset. Now, there's still folks with that mindset like these folks are doing me a favor. Like, thank God I'm here. Thank God I'm in this nation. You know, one of the greatest nations in the world. Right. But again, right. not for us. Not for us. Right. Not for us. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Right. And it's not yet because this is our, this is that was our origin. That was the beginnings. OK. Right. And we had a troubled beginning. Right. So now right. And the thing is, we, we possess so many tools. Yeah, we're able to turn that into something real, but we have already. But again, we can we can be a lot better, okay? So with that being said, uh, you know, yeah, and that whole like, oh yeah, you know, that keep that, that broadband bully crap, you know, like uh, if it was me, you know, like <laughs> if that was me, if that was me, man, I'm telling you what was crazy, man. You know, we 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 uh, there's a lot of little videos and little jokes on social media, man. This is one where this guy has this big big ass whip. It's got like a chain on the end of it. It was like an Asian man, like a big dude. And when he snapped that whip, man, you saw smoke coming off that joint, man. <laughs> and it was right. just the, the noise was like a thunderclap, right? The noise of it all. And then it was this little dude, you know, he's making fun of it. And he looked at it, his eyes, you know, got wide. And then he right. started picking cotton, like, hell no, nah, hell no, nah, oh, hell, hell no. Nah. Right. 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 And you know, that, that, that was a hell of a uh, correction tool, okay? Yeah, there's a lot of things that you said. You know what, you know, man, you remember uh, Mr. Henderson from uh, second grade? He told me that what they used to do, man, with runaway slaves, is they used to uh, put a contraption around their neck and it had a series yeah. of hooks on it. Yeah. It had a series when of run. hooks on it. So if they try to run into the thickets, you know what I'm saying? They would get they caught get, up. They get trapped up. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, if you're seeing, look, man, look how, look, <laughs> look how we control now, right? Look how we control now. Could you imagine then when we really didn't right. have any rights? 
Please, right. man, with the least with that, like I would have, I would have. And you know what, man? You know how strong those dudes in that turn had to have been. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Strong wills, strong minded. You know. So that that yeah yeah miss me with all that you know that tough guy talk, man. That, that's that's a different. Uh, this people that don't even want to stand up now. You know, people that are shut now. Kind of, they don't even want to kneel. They don't even want to kneel. People that are. Sh- They'll shun. They'll shun our podcast because of what we talk about. The thing is, and that's the other point. That, that's the other point that I wanted to make. A lot of folks look at this and say, "Well, you know, these, this is anti-white rhetoric, or this anti." No, it's not. This is pro us rhetoric. This is pro us to. This is atonement. This is therapy. This is bringing enlightenment to what we don't see, or, or what Absolutely. we, what, you know, what we're, and what we're doing. You know what I mean? So, like, Absolutely. you can miss me with that as well. You know what I mean? Uh, we could debate that all day. Uh, you know, what about what? What about the even, think, think about this, right? If you were on, if you were in the transatlantic slave ship trade, like if you were on that ship, right? You're on that ship, you were just stolen away. Say you're 16, 17 years old. Say you're 26 years old. You know, you just ripped away from your, your wife and your kids and you're chained to somebody who doesn't speak the same dialect as you, but they have the same hue as you. And they're just as scared. You look and he's bigger than you, but his eyes are bloodshot and he's shaking. He just pissed himself. You know what I'm saying? Imagine how you would feel, right? Imagine how you would feel. You'd be angry, you know, you would be terrified. But imagine how brave you had to be in order to jump off the boat. You know what I'm saying? What? Like there was a whole nother rebellion before the rebellion. There was a whole nother revolt before the revolt. People who said, I, 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 what do you say before I be a slave, I'd be buried, buried in my grave. You know how many yeah. Africans how many Africans never were enslaved or never made it to slavery because they just took their death in the Atlantic Ocean? You know, I say to them, you feel me? So when we talk about rebellion and you talk about, I would have did this and I would have did that. No, you wouldn't have. You don't know what the hell no, you, you would have done, right? That Stop. shit was, that's some, other, that's some other shit. Not to mention it was multi-generational. You would, not to mention if you were a second or third generation slave, you already, you weren't rebelling. You were born thinking that that's what your plight was in life. A cow, a cow doesn't ask. Yeah, yeah. Indoctrinated. A cow doesn't say, am I really supposed to give these motherfuckers my milk? Isn't this milk supposed to yeah. be for my babies and not for your babies? A cow doesn't say yep. that. A cow says move. You feel me? Like, so you can't, it's, it's difficult to talk about what you would have done. But I do agree with you. The reason why they existed, what they would what they would have wanted is for us to advance. What they would have wanted was to yeah. be remembered and they would have wanted that yeah. legacy to have meant something. So they don't want us to be yeah. slaves now. And, and you know, and we and look, and, and and it's not taking. They did what they they could do in the in the circumstances. So we're not like cutting them down. It's more so though. But you know, like I said, the origin of it, it wasn't positive, man. It wasn't right. positive, and, and we have to do better now that we know we know about it. You know, um, right. and and you know, you'll never hear me saying that. Oh, you know, it, it's fucked up what they did and what they passed on to us. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that you know, what I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like you know, that's no longer. Uh, relevant, okay? <laughs> that's no longer necessary, okay? So let's not, you know what I mean? We don't have to do that anymore. We don't, you know, um, we're not in those circumstances. Um, right. And again, we, we, we see how it has become negative in our in our communities. So, Yo, yeah, let's get it together. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get it together. Yo, one, th- one thing, um, so we, we've already put a uh, banana cherry bomb. Uh, I think I, I am, but one thing, one, one thing, one thing, <laughs> One thing uh, in talking about this, you know, us, whether or not we're better than our ancestors or what, you know, people say they would have done. I've been thinking about it since our uh, conversation about a month ago, about a month ago. I've been thinking to myself that um, I'm going to change Kanye West from being in my top five. He's no longer in my top five. Oh, um, no. Yeah, I'm changing Kanye West. I, 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 know, I no longer really want to listen to Kanye West's music. The reason why I'm talking about Kanye West is because it leads into my next question. Um, before we get there, though, banana cannonball me, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> spread leg, spread, spread wide leg wide cannonball, leg. right? So, uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's pretty much the arm straight out, leg straight out, bringing it up. Explode back down. Let me see this. Bring it up. Explode back down. This is this is a muffle. All right. right, So banana candy ball it. All right, cool. Keep keep your keep your set going. Keep your set going. All right. So with K West, man. So um he made that comment a a little while ago um on TMZ. And oh boy, I can't remember his name right now. Um shout out to him because he kept it real. Um one of the few black dudes on TMZ. Um 
It was like uh, Kanye West say, slavery was a choice. Slavery was a wow. choice. And I get what he was saying. He was basically trying to say that, like, there was more of us than it was of them. And, you know, they should have rebelled and they should have revolted. And they decided to let them do that. They didn't fight every with every. They didn't fight tooth and nail. They didn't fight to the end, you know, and which leads into the implication that he would. That he would fight tooth and nail. That he would do whatever it takes in order to not be a slave or be enslaved. Um, what do you think about that, yo? Yeah. Um. Uh, again, uh, you know uh, what I was talking about before. I mean, it's easier said than done. Okay. Um, you know, we can talk all that cash shit right now that we're not involved in that. You know, we have, you know, we have AC in our homes. Okay. <laughs> I, right. I guess you know what I mean. We have indoor plumbing. Man, stop playing. Um. Uh, so I, I, I look. I'm not. I really don't have much to say about that. I think. Um. So really, the man is just a cloud chaser. Um. And the he's been. He has been he has been trained by the best in guerrilla marketing uh, that that exists. Okay, you know you know who was who was his ex wife? His ex wife was Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is a, a self made billionaire based on you know shit content. Okay, look, excuse my language, but it really is. It's not enlightening. It's, it is nothing. There's nothing to it. Now, shout out to them for doing so and to pr- and playing on those who are willing to you know kind of rock with that. But yeah, it's not my cup of tea. Um, not necessarily trying to talk negative about it, but it really doesn't bring. It doesn't bring any. You know, I, like I said, I don't think it's worth. Whoa! I don't Dave. think it's worth. Don't you mess with these people's uh, these people's Kardashians. That's like messing with a Christ. You better stop it. You better stop hey, it. Hey, You're gonna get canceled. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> Yo, Kanye West. Is a, Kanye West. How about this for real? Kanye West is a slave. So don't talk about what slave you would have done if you were a slave. We see what you're doing now, and you are a slave. Boom! Right. Um, my job. You know, so, 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 and, and again, he's just, he's just cloud chasing. And I think that got him more publicity than, than anything. You understand what I'm saying? The whole Trump thing got him publicity. Put Kanye's West. You know, the next question mouth. is just, you know, um, like you imply to, is he a genius or is he, is he insane? Right. <laughs> like what we talked about before. Um, yeah, I think he's a genius. Um, and when it comes to it, because he's playing to like the, the end game is capitalism. The end game is money. And he's doing what's necessary to attain the most of it, you know, uh, with his skill set. And he's doing, and he's, again, it doesn't matter what he thinks, right? We forget about that from one day to the next. We're push button society, man. We're fickle. We have the attention spans of fleas, okay? <laughs> so we, we, we don't remember that, we don't remember one day to the next, man, when it comes to this crap. So I, differ. Too much confidence in it. I differ. I differ. I differ here. Um, I differ here. Um, I think his, I think him, I think that's what makes him a slave. Uh, I don't think that's what makes well, him. I, 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 I didn't do. say he wasn't. I didn't say he wasn't. No, a hear, hear me he, out. Hear I me out. No, no, no. Hear me out. You said, and I'm not sure if you misspoke, but you're saying his ability to basically flip anything to make it into money um, makes him a genius. I think that's his downfall. I think that's what makes him a slave. His genius is in his musical ability, and especially what he can do when it comes to mixing and mastering and like um, editing or producing music or making beats. Uh, I even think he nice with the pen when he really um, has time to do that and not pay people to write his rhymes for him. So I think he nice, I think he's a creative genius and that's why I put him in my top five. Um, but when it comes to him being willing to do or say anything or be gimmicky or do the gorilla marking, like you said, that is why he is a slave. The fact that he thinks that certain clothes make you a certain person or you know, he even said it like that he's a slave because he forgot who he is. You know I mean, he said, um, you know, um, um, he said, we all subconscious. I'm just the first to admit it. You know, he was like, I can't even go to the grocery store without some one that's clean and a shirt with a team to see. We live in the American dream. The people that are say it with me, workout buddies, high us up, got the lowest self esteem. Right? He knew this shit. You know, so that's why I fucked with him at first. And now it's like, how do you put out content like that and then turn right around and be like, Oh well, I'm gonna get this money, you know, like. Well, yeah, but look at look. All right, so it's all about application, right? It's all about what you are trying to atto- uh, attain, right? Like right now, we're trying to we're trying to get hearts and minds, right? You know, um, and we're using whatever tactics necessary to do so. Okay, he was out. He was out with Almighty Dollar, and he did, and he was great at doing so, bro. You know what I'm saying? So like, he used his intellect and his, his abilities and his skills. To do so, you know what I mean? However you slice it, being a slave, you know, whatever, whatever mold he fit to get it, he did it. You know what I'm saying? So, so do you I'm think not... so do you think do you think that he 
when he said uh, George Bush doesn't care about black people, do you think that was him being gimmicky or do you think that was the old Kanye? Nah, I think that was, you know, that, that was, that was, uh, that was, again, that was the, the negative, you know, well, I get, all right, there's no such thing as negative publicity, right? <laughs> right? Like, there's no, like, right. what, how did that hurt him? How did that hurt Kanye West? Right? It helped him. That's, That's what I'm saying. It helped him. <laughs> it helped him. Okay. Okay. So my thing is this, nobody was, nobody's willing to do stuff like that. Nobody's, nobody's, you know, ballsy enough to do shit like that, bro. Especially in Hollywood. Are you the same? Like, did you see Mike Myers' so, face? Did you see his, so did you I see did. I, I remember. I remember. So it, with that being the case, this is where the genius would lie for me. The genius would lie in, if he kept doing shit like that, like telling the truth. Like saying uh-huh. things that people wouldn't say because it's too true. But that's not what Kanye West has been doing. Kanye West has been saying that nah. slavery was a choice. You know, Kanye West uh-huh. has been saying things that like even low bottom feeder oh, yeah, black people Kanye West is resorting to in order to get views or get people, you know, or, or like he, um, what, the, what do you do? Um, the Mercedes Benz Stadium, you know, he, um, he, rented out, he rented out space in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. He lived in there. They say he moved in there. Um, and he paid a, they say he paid a million dollars a day to live in a Mercedes Benz stadium to finish um, the Donda album. It's like, okay, he's, what he's is a, that? He's a big ass. So, so this is the thing, man. You know, um, I think pure, pure creativity and intelligence come from a childlike uh, state. Um, you know, uh, you, you, again, when you don't have the same, you know, inhibitions and, and, and distractions as, you know, like in, like, like you would in your adult life, I think. That is the mother of, of creation. That's the mother of invention. Um, honestly, because our kids are the most, you know, intuitive and, 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 and ingenuitive uh, beings on, this, on, the, on the face of this earth because they're they're not inhibited with doubt. They're not inhibited with all the things that we put, that we that we instill in them to kind of stifle their growth. So I think when he does things like that, he's living in a childlike state, bro. Like honestly, that's something you do as a, like a kid. You remember like when we were like, man, if I had a million dollars, I'll have your house on the moon. Or I have me like a, a submarine and all that other crazy. You know, I, get crazy I get it. Right? I get it. So, it's so crazy he's got, right, it's the he's crazy kind of. Right, but he's got that dope. I think it's a childlike kind of. I, I think it's a child childlike kind of. I don't want to say crazy. I said that he's he, it's like Michael Jackson. He's doing he's he's pulling his version of Michael Jackson. Right? Was Michael Jackson crazy? People would say he was, yeah. right? But yeah. was Michael Jackson yeah. crazy? Was my or, or just a victim of, of of stardom, right? Like, so my thing is this: I think he's just he's in a childlike mode. I think he's in you know he's in his own zone right now. A million dollars a day for something like that to isolate himself to something that like that you always thought about, like just crazy thoughts, like you always thought about doing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's just he's doing it. He's just doing it. And then the thing is, in the midst of him doing it, he's getting publicity in the same light because you know about it. He's, everybody knows about it. So it's just like he's just building himself up, man. He's 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 starting his own kingdom, man. Like he's just being the best him in a, in a childlike in a childlike state, man. Like he's ventured off in so many different things, the gospel stuff, all this craziness, the clothing line. He's just like I said, he's everywhere he wants to be, and, and he's right. doing it in his own way. That's why I said like it. He's like so it's hard to debate whether or not he's smart or or crazy because, but in America, in America, he's intelligent. Put it plainly, because the end game is what. Capitalism. The end game is getting that dollar, is filling up that money bin by like Scrooge McDuck, and he's doing it. Yeah, see, for me, I guess uh, for me, it's not. I mean, that that is a good, that's a good, you know, avenue. You know, I want money to come along my journey, but my end game is definitely not to get to, to the bag. Like, hey, y'all can shoot me, shoot you can. Sh- I'm the messenger. You can shoot me if you want, but my end game isn't getting yeah. to the bag. The bag comes along, comes along while I'm on the journey to my end game. Um, and I feel you, you know, I feel you. you feel me, you feel me, and I know that's 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 uh, that's how you are too. I know. Well, I'm just saying, like, I live in Atlanta, right? So, um, I, you know, he did the first like listening party here, and people just sat out there. People paid all this money, and they just went out there, and he didn't even speak. You know, he wore a mask. He didn't even know who was Kanye West. He didn't even know who was him. You know, so that's on that's on the people that wanted to pay that money, right? That's smart. I thought that's a marketing genius. You're right. Um, but. Yeah. When it comes to paying a million dollars to stay in, you know, million a million dollars a day to stay someplace where you could, um, first of all, all of the community around the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is dilapidated. Um, there's nothing but homelessness. I mean, we have tent communities. I mean, I what I would respect more, and this is just me. This is what I would do, you know, um, if I had Kanye West money. Uh, I would say I'll pay a million dollars a day 
Um, but I'm going to need y'all to help me donate um, a half a million dollars a day. Or I need you to take half of that. Or I need you to take a quarter of that. And I need you to put it into the homeless communities around this. Because nobody's paying the Mercedes-Benz Stadium a million dollars a day um, for a room, right? They capped off of that. If that was true, they made so much money off of that shit, right? So at least orchestrate a deal where like people who are suffering in the community can benefit off of your said genius. Then I'll be like, this motherfucker, just like, just like what he did with George Bush. Like what he did with George Bush when he was like, George Bush doesn't, uh, with, when he said George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah, about that black song, people. yeah that's, that was a voice. We were like, oh shit, he said what everybody has been saying. And he said that at the perfect time because George Bush allowed the levies to break or he made the levies break or whatever the fuck it was. A, you know what I mean? It was a, a scandal. You know, so the fact that he said that, I was like, he's a fucking genius. You know, so do something like know. that, man. Don't just like draw attention to yourself so that you could be, you could run the capitalistic race, you know, like better, the better people around you are you doing it, man. I don't know uh, George yeah, Bush's involvement in, in that. I really can't speak too much on, on, on that one. But I know that when you talk about the homeless, he does need to pay homage and royalties to those fools for stealing their ideas for his clothing line. Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Something. <laughs> This shit is garbage. This shit is garbage. Like, you, know, like, you, know, you should do something. You should do something for the fools, bro. Because when do you get this oh right? So, like, that's real. That's some real shit. Yo, man. Hey, yo, man. Look, my app's still good, man. I say we get out of here. What do you say, bro? I, that, that hey, was, man, I, can't, I can't. We can't do it no better than that last. That last bit you just did. That was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Hey, great, great ad day, Dave. Um, great conversations as always. Uh, oh, you know, man. always a oh, therapeutic man. being with you, my dude. Um, hey, y'all yeah. been in PE with Dave and Jay where we build while we build. Yeah. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to sign up.